Good morning. <laughs> you are so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. You You're too. How are you too. feeling this morning? I am well. Thank you so, so much for joining us. My name is Tashelle, and I'll be doing your interview this morning with Urban Bridges. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. It is an honor to speak with you. Thank you. Yes, let's jump right in and let's start talking about colors. Why did you decide it was time for another album? Well, I had been working towards another album for a little while. I'm always kind of in and out of the studio. Um, but I think especially over the pandemic, it just felt like it would, how can I use this time in my favor? And while I'm kind of forced to sit still and, you know, so after I got to collect myself, I could start pouring my energy into being creative and finishing some thoughts and I finally felt like I had enough to say and enough to share and wanted to convey a whole mood. Um, and so this album has become, you know, a collection of songs, but also just like, a, I wanna convey a feeling and an a atmosphere. Okay, so speaking of moods and feelings and atmospheres, um, the album just kind of starts out smooth with um, just some instruments and we hear the flow and then we hear the lyrics where time heals all things. Was that yeah. intentional that you kind of came in setting the tone with the, um, the instruments and the smoothness and then kind of jumped into that? Yeah, I think for me, things are more abstract and um, organic. And then it falls into place to make sense. But I think with every album I have, it is intentional what the first song is, yes, to set a tone um, and just kind of open the door and open up the energy to the to the rest of the album that, you know, then gets more into the love songs and sensual side of things. But I wanted to start off the album um, just with where I've been at and just that, you know, we're coming out of some times of uncertainty and I feel like I've had to really trust myself and just keep moving forward and trust that the path is going to keep opening. And so I kind of wanted to, yeah, kind of clear the other way um, for to kind of come back and meet people where they're at and then take them along with me on the rest of the journey. Okay. Now our favorites are top off, uh, off top, excuse me, are Enough, Need You, and Color My Heart. What oh, song, if any... Which songs off the album reflect, if any of them, where you are right now in your life? Hmm. I think that for me, it's it's more of a um, which which day you catch me on. <laughs> you know, all of the songs are a piece of me. You know, and um. You mentioning enough, I mean, that's kind of like, I feel like uh, self-worth and learning to trust myself and try not to look at others for validation, but be honest about, you know, it's self-acceptance is a journey on its own. And um, I think even for me to write that song, I kind of had to admit myself, to admit to myself that sometimes I do feel like not enough, but then to, you know, 
arrive at what are the things that make me feel that way and just kind of be there with the vulnerability and kind of I will say most days I'm like on the other side of feeling like okay you're you're going to be all right in the in the quiet still voice inside of me is kind of louder now you know as i trust myself and my gut more and more and i just think i wanted to have that like within the scope of things cuz i feel like especially for women we go through that a lot of like looking outside ourselves for validation um and i mean you kind of said the breath of it i need you is like a fun song for me it's like very um vibey i'm looking forward to starting to perform that song cuz i've gotten some good feedback off it but it's one of the few songs that i haven't even ever got to test out live so i'm looking forward to that you know as i do these upcoming shows um but i enjoy songs like i need you and purple and stuff that's just like i don't know it's just a feel good feel good song um and then color my heart is probably one of the most optimistic songs on the album because it's just tapping into the butterfly feeling you know and like the excitement and for me going back to like the beginning feelings of falling in love and i don't always write songs from that perspective um sometimes i'm just living when it's in that energy and so i wanted to finally write a song that kind of captured that vibrant feeling that's that's hard to bottle up yeah that's a good way to put it uh, yeah <laughs> so where did that one <laughs> um you spoke about purple um and we see amari hardwick in that video how did that come about um Let's see. Well, I've been knowing Omari Hardwick since we worked on Sparkle together. Um, that Jordan Sparks and Whitney Houston and Derek Luke were in and Carmen Ajoko. It was such an amazing cast, Mike Epps. Um, and I got to have like a little cameo in that I'm like one of the the singing groups and I got to record a song running for that but we met on that set and I feel like since then we did some songwriting together on the strongest glass album um on perfect he was part of writing strongest glass the title track and um yeah and we've just been friends and I've admired his acting, you know, for a long time. He just brings so much energy. So when I was doing the video for Purple, it was kind of the perfect excuse to reach out to him and see like, you know, would he collaborate with me on it? And um I wanted to work with someone that would bring like authentic charisma and and kind of a natural chemistry cuz we're comfortable with each other and I got to work with Damian Saldova who I had never worked with before but really talented director from the bay area and we just wanted to convey that your I guess we're we're trying to find each other but there's this purple atmosphere and just this feeling chasing this feeling and trying to enter this other world of each other and um so you know it was like this huge space that we got to use which was really cool cuz it wasn't a lot in after effects it was really just like 
the real atmosphere there, you know, that even ends in the rain and then comes in with Oh Hi, which is another song on the album that we wanted to tease into. So that was an awesome experience for me and kind of unusual. All right, now, over 20 years now. Yes. Closer is still that song. And we go to that song for inspiration. We go to that song for the vibes. Did you have any idea when you recorded that song that it would still be in rotation all this time now, that it would be sampled, that it would have made an impact the way that it did? Absolutely not. I would have never imagined and, you know, there's so many songs. I've done, what, like maybe six albums. And there's been so many songs, you know, as I perform that I'll take on and off rotation. And I remember maybe like a couple years after I recorded the song and it would always be on the set. I was like, maybe I should take this off now. This isn't new. And then people would ask about it. And just over the years, it's like people will come up and tell me their stories about what they were going through in their life when they first heard the song or, you know, um, kind of their journey of getting to the next step, whether it was like moving to a new place and just needing some kind of song to lean on to know that the struggle they were going through was just temporary and I mean wildly successful people and it makes me so happy I think it was like a, a vision that I had for my music in general like how can I have a positive impact on other people's lives how can I connect with other people um, in a way that was kind of hard to imagine at the time, but I wouldn't have thought that song at all. I think that song just kind of flowed easily. I had been working with Amp Live and Mike Tiger, um, who produced it and they just laid a bed for such a vibe. And it was really just capturing a feeling and I, no, would have had no idea that I would even still be performing it any years later, you know? I, it just felt like something personal to me. Yeah, that's, it's, it's like such an amazing song. It's just like a classic. Just It just is what it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, our very own Prince um, came to a show of yours. Um, tell yeah. us about that experience and the party that you attended here at Paisley Park. Mm. Well, I remember the first time he came to my show was probably in 2005 or something like that. I think it was like um, while I was starting to work on my second album and I was blown away. I was a fan for so long before that. And um, I remember talking to him and just feeling like, what is going on? You know what I mean? Like on the outside, I was calm, but on the inside, I was just like, is this my life? Are we sitting here talking? Am I being chill enough? You know, I didn't want to freak him out or make him feel uncomfortable in any way. I think he was such an amazing artist and writer and musician and business person. You know, he really thought outside of the box and he became like a mentor and friend. And, you know, we talked about independence and owning your masters and the process of songwriting and being in the studio and being vulnerable and like open, you know, and really letting down your guard 
recording and how to treat your music like art pieces and respect it and not just give it away. And, you know, I think he advocated for so many independent artists, especially, you know, for us to think about ownership and to be, to be fiercely creative, but also to believe in our worth, you know? Um, and then, you know, he, he came out to several shows. He came out to the Bay Area when I did a release of my second album. Um, he flew out there with Sheila E. And that meant so much to me, like, you know, being in the Bay Area and have him come there. And just over the years, I mean, he was really inspirational and definitely has influenced my songwriting and how I think about production and kind of the juxtaposition of having something raw and beautiful and edgy and kind of like how he balanced the feminine and masculine energy. Um, so I definitely thought about him, you know, in several songs, like since I wrote First Love even um, but also especially on, on this latest release, Purple. Um, you mentioned the Bay Area. Let's yeah. talk about the Bay. Um, we're excited here at UB about um, Lunell's Netflix special this month. Yes. Let's talk about your Oakland connection with her. Yes. Um, we actually met through Dave Chappelle that put out her special but she's, you know, a hometown hero and known nationally. And I was at the taping at Yoshi's in Oakland for her Netflix special. And the energy was incredible in the room. I mean, she can work a room like no other. And she just, she says shocking things, but it's just so real. And she just says what women don't normally say. And especially what grown ass women don't normally say. And especially that are not like, you know, yeah, like to, to be, to be super grown talking like that. It's just like, it was jaw dropping, but we were just crying, <laughs> laughing and celebrating her. And um, she's, yeah, she's just so real, but hilarious. And um, it really like, I was really moved to seeing her special, just seeing her get her flowers now. She's put in the work for most of her life, you know? And, um, you know, performed on so many different stages, but to see her with this kind of exposure right now and representing Oakland um, is really special and a special time. Yeah. Um, no, we know that you are rather well connected, although we haven't seen you collaborate with very many people. Um, yeah, I'm working any? on that. Okay, so uh, <laughs> what artists are there that are on your list that um, you would love to work with with the opportunity present? Um, well, there's a, a few things that I have that I'm just like, still want to release. You know, I did something with Yasin Bey that hasn't officially been released. I did something with um, Tyga that wasn't officially released. I've got to work with so many, I would say mainly rappers for some reason. And I think maybe it's from how I started in the Bay Area and I was working with Hieroglyphics and Souls of Mischief um, when I was first started recording and even, you know, did a, ended up doing a deal through their distribution when I was first putting out Closer with my family label, Skyblaze. Um, and also got to work with BJ. I just did a song with Raheem Devon. But there's so many people I still um, 
want to collaborate with. And I can't say just yet, but there's like a few things in the works. Um, me and D Smoke work in the studio recently working on some stuff that I really like. Um, I was working with major league DJs out of South Africa um, on this I'm a Piano song that I'm really excited about that will be for, you know, the, the next project. But there's, you know, I'm about to release this project closer, but there's also a bunch of things that I'm currently working on that, that I'm exciting that will be for the the next energy. You seem to have been able to keep um, such like a like a light and such a positive energy um, still all this time about um, the industry and music. You seem like your passion has not left and like, you know, the purpose is still there. How have you been able to stay so unjaded um, all this time? <laughs> mm -hmm. to be able to be so positive well it is it's my intention it is on purpose and it's not without effort and I think it's mainly because I have good people around me um I've worked with my family label Skyblaze since the beginning so there's a certain amount of empowerment that I've been able to have regardless of the industry and the industry like the music business is like a roller coaster um so it's not that i'm always positive about that i'm not always positive about the world none of that it's more so that i try and and remain grateful that I get to do what I love. There's a bunch of jobs that I could have done and I'm happy that I get to do something creative and that there's been an audience and that people have supported me. So I kind of have to just keep that baseline all the time. Um, and so, it, and, and then it kind of lets me ride the roller coaster with a little more inner peace, you know? And um, and I've been able to take my time in between each project so that I can wait until I'm inspired again, you know? And I've got to have a balance of living my life, which has been really nice, you know, and get to have a family and stuff like that. I think that sometimes as an entrepreneur and as an artist and anyone in entertainment, you know, and this probably even leads into sports and everything. It You have to give so much energy and it kind of feels like the grind never stops. And um, it can feel like you can't have a life because you have to just keep doing, doing, going, going, going. And I think I early on made a choice like I don't want my career to be at the sacrifice of getting to even have a life. Um, I still want to be able to have a full life. So I try and keep that balance. And I think that helps me. <laughs> you know, not get burnt out and just like remember to what, what to be grateful for. And yeah, and get to still enjoy stepping on stage and connecting with people. And I'll tell you what, going through the pandemic and not being able to be in person with people and only, you know, doing a show out of my living room or some isolated studio and performing to a, a video camera. Um, it definitely made me appreciate each time I am in the room with people or outside, you know, at an event and actually get to have that authentic connection because 
That's one of the things I love most about this is the connection that we get to have with each other, you know, through through music. I think music is like this common language. You don't even have to understand what people are saying, but if you can feel it, you know, it can change the whole energy, you know. Um where I'm getting to know that we have to wrap up. So I could I oh, could do this all day. It's like I could do this all day. Uh, <laughs> and I was running late. I'm sorry. No, you that's are a work fine. in progress for me. I'm like <laughs> you are totally how do you fine. show up on time. <laughs> I appreciate you so much. I appreciate your conversation. I appreciate like I said you you spoke about your vibe and your vibe is felt and um I appreciate that um you are you give out light and I'm here for it. So I thank you. I thank you for speaking with me. I thank you for speaking with us. Um, I thank you for your artistry, for your passion behind what you do, for still caring about um, your artistry. Um, and so thank you for your intention that you put in and what you continue to do still um, all this time. So I appreciate thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you. Yes, thank we look you. forward thank to the for success of this album. And we will be following you forever. We're still here. We're still rocking with you. So. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank I need you it. So yes. Much. November 3rd, the album comes out. So okay. I we'll appreciate be, it. We'll be on the lookout November 3rd. Thank you so much for speaking with Thank me. You. Thank you. Have a good one. You too.